So let me tell you my biggest and best kept secrets. And please hold on tight to your seats as I reveal this. But I might be a bit of a Nokia fan. No, but seriously, I've been a fan of this brand for a very long time now, for many reasons. Back in the day, Nokia was pushing phone innovations in hardware, software, as well as cameras, which is the main reason I've sticked to using the brand even when things weren't going very well. For those of you who don't know, Nokia was out of the smartphone business from 2014 until about 2017, when they gave the rights to use their brand name to HMD Global. HMD Global is a Finnish startup company run by ex-Nokia employees who worked there during their golden years. Since their return to the smartphone market, it's been a bumpy ride, with some flashes of brilliance seen here and there, and plenty of frustrations for us fans. So I wanted to look objectively at what was working and what wasn't, to see how the brand can regain some of its former glory, and even build a new fan base that would turn this business into something sustainable. Hopefully help the brand push the innovation envelope the same way they used to back in the day. So let's start with what's working. Their hardware and design has been excellent so far. If you pick up any Nokia phone these days, from budget to high-end devices, they all look and feel amazing. They feel dense, durable, and expensive for their respective classes something that the brand was formerly known for. Remember all the memes about how indestructible the Nokia 3310 was? Well, this kind of continued even during their touchscreen phone era, and I appreciate them keeping this heritage. Their phones also look really good in my opinion. They have been one of the only brands to adopt a symmetrical rear camera design, where if you look at the back of the phone, the camera is always centered and dominant. The rear logo is still in landscape mode, and the rest of the design tends to be very minimal and modern. This might not stand out in pictures, but if you pick up any of their phones, you will appreciate all these little details. The gap between them and their competition is not as big as it used to be, but it's definitely still there, especially in the budget segment. While Android One isn't for everyone, I can't deny that they've been the best so far in updating all their lineup continuously with the latest versions of Android. They have fully committed to updating their lineup of devices for up to two years, which means that if you own a Nokia device, you'll most likely get two new versions of Android and up to three years of security updates. That's something minor, but it would definitely be appreciated by business owners and enterprise customers. This commitment to updates is non-existent in the budget smartphone market where their competitors usually offer one major update to Android, if you're lucky. It isn't implemented perfectly though, and it usually still takes them some time to fix some of the bugs that they introduce with new versions of Android, but it's still much better than their competition. So what's not working? Numerous phones released that cause confusion in pricing as well as naming. It has gone a bit better recently, but if you looked at their lineup, they had a standard and plus version of almost every phone. And some of these phones conflicted with one another in terms of specs, price, as well as size. So is the Nokia 6.1 better than the 5.1 plus? Is the Nokia 6.1 Plus better than the 7.1? The second problem is not enough time testing new updates, where even though they had a really good record in terms of updating their phones, these new updates almost always caused problems for users. I can't help but feel like dealing with so many phones and trying to update them all is the problem here. You're only making your life harder. Low to high-end device strategy is not working. What I mean by this is that if you look at their lineup, there are a lot more phones released within the 5 series and below than there are 7 series and above. And this, these devices might sell well, but they don't create hype for the brand. The fourth point is outdated flagships that are super late to be released. Every flagship device they've released so far has been running on older generation processors. Even if the phones were good and some of them had some excellent aspects, Buyers looking to spend north of $600 usually expect the latest and greatest, which just wasn't happening. What isn't helping as well is that the phones are announced then released many months after. This kills any sort of momentum you built as people move on to something newer, usually offered by our competition. The fifth point is that their imaging hasn't lived up to the Nokia brand name. Even though they've partnered with Zeiss for Optics, their imaging department has been lacking in almost every aspect. From using mediocre off-the-shelf sensors, below their respective class, to lacking some of the hallmarks that made the brand so powerful before. They have completely missed the mark so far with imaging, even if their phones did have some okay aspects. When you stick PureView branding on a phone, people expect the same level of innovation found on devices like the Atoid PureView, Lumia 920, and Lumia 1020, 
which all were way ahead of their time and brimming with innovative features. So far, their only interesting camera-centric device is the Nokia 9 PureView, which had way too many shortfalls and shortcomings for it to be considered the cream of the crop. The final point is not offering enough software differentiation on their flagship devices. While offering Android One can be a good thing, it also means that there is barely any differentiation between their low-end devices and their high-end devices when it comes to software. Their flagships don't end up standing out, and as a user, why should you pick a high-end Nokia device if it doesn't offer anything exciting or groundbreaking software or hardware-wise? So what are the solutions? Solution number one, flagship first strategy. Release a super flagship device every year, market it to death, and build hype for the brand. Make sure it has all the latest and greatest specifications and make sure it offers something innovative one way or the other. This will help sell devices all across the range as people expect the same sort of quality to trickle down. Give people something that they aspire to own. They'll end up buying your mid-rangers and budget devices hoping that they'll be able to buy your very best one day. This will also get people talking about the brand which is marketing you don't even need to pay for. Solution number two, much bigger focus on imaging innovation. No more just good enough approach to imaging. Everything should be perfect and fitting of the PureView brand. Custom imaging sensors, top-notch features that rival the very best, and a focus on trying to push the industry forward, rather than trying to copy everyone else. The software experience should keep up with the hardware. Ever wondered why the iPhone is considered by many tech journalists as the best smartphone? I would say it's about 90% experience and 10% final result. It almost makes you feel like you can take a bad picture. You never have to worry about the autofocus or the exposure. It just works. Now imagine adding to this a very professional manual mode for those of us who like to tinker around and know how to use a proper camera. You will literally combine the best of both worlds. Trickle some of those innovations to your mid-rangers and budget devices and you'll have winners. In fact, I would go with the Google approach of trying to create the best imaging experience in every segment without trying to create artificial difference between the different segments. Point number three is software is king. It's time your flagship devices adopt a new software experience. It is a much needed differentiation factor. You may not want to stray too far from the Android One appearance, but you definitely want to offer unique and very special software experiences. OnePlus is a brand that does this really well, where initially it looks very similar to stock Android, but it's filled with unique and interesting features. In a perfect world, I would ask for a unique experience, something similar to the Z launcher, or even inspired by Mego Harmaton. But I understand that at this point, it might not be feasible. It doesn't hurt to look into it though, does it? The fourth solution is less is more. Instead of trying to create nine different devices for every single segment, narrow it down to about three or four. Devices like the 3.2 and 4.2 can easily be merged, and the same can be said about the 6.2 and 7.2. Now perfect each one of these phones and sell them for a competitive price. Your current and previous lineups are very confusing for customers, especially those who don't know what's newer or older, no matter how simple you think your naming scheme is. And the plus variants only make it worse. The overlapping specifications within each segment also doesn't help. This way you can spend much more on marketing every device and you desperately need to go big on spending in marketing. Which takes us to the final solution. Go big on marketing. Companies like Samsung and Huawei have built their entire legacy on big marketing spending. You might not have the same huge budget, but clever advertising can go a long way. I would say a brand like OnePlus does some of the best marketing in the business without spending nearly as much as the big boys. One area that could easily be improved is more videos of recently launched products. People get super hyped about phones right after launch, and more videos will only get people talking more about the brand. Give us more hands-on videos, videos that focus on the craftsmanship and so on. This is especially needed for flagship devices. I personally remember watching every single video Nokia released for the Lumia 920 at the time, and it made me really desperate to try and get one as soon as it was released. I've been wanting to make this video since forever, but never really had the time to organize my thoughts. So what do you think about the solutions offered by me? I mean, I know I'm not really a phone sales expert, but these were all my impressions throughout watching the brand struggle recently, especially trying to get a foothold in this super competitive market. And I definitely don't wanna see this brand disappear again. Please, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you liked this video, please share, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. But it's still...
years, which means that you might... I can't help but feel that dealing with so many devices of different specs and processors and all of that is the reason I can't remember the rest of the sentence.